Good day everyone, my name is Dalia Monano and I will be discussing society and education, philosophical perspective. This lesson dwells on philosophical thoughts on education, what should be taught for the socialization of the individual and how this should be taught. To fully understand the concept behind these philosophical thoughts, let us first define what is a philosophy. Philosophy is the study of the fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence, especially when considered as an academic discipline. So, a philosophy always considered as a particular system of philosophical thoughts. Now, I'm going to discuss these philosophical thoughts of education from the various philosophers. First, we have John Locke. John Locke considered to be an empiricist educator. When we speak on empiricism, the empiricist believes that the knowledge of the world is based on one's experience. So, what you are right now, it is the accumulation of all the things you have experienced in your life. Another, John Locke is known for his theory, child was born as tabula rasa or a blank slate, which means empty. This states that men are born without innate ideas and that knowledge comes from experience and perception as opposed to predetermined good and evil nature and that child's character is based on his experience of the world and of his dealings with the environment so the nature and the nurture would actually positively or negatively affects child's character he questioned the traditional view that knowledge came exclusively from literary sources, particularly Greek and Latin, because he believes that the learner learns from authentic experience and they are active agent of their own learning. They make their own lives, they are responsible for their own learning, they live the life that they wanted. Another very important thing that relevant to the perspective of John Locke is that he negated the divine right of the kings, theory which held that the monarch had a right to be an unquestioned and absolute ruler over his subject. John Locke believed that no one is destined to be a ruler forever because people should establish their own government and that select their own political leaders and he believes that all are equal now let's move on to the next philosopher the utilitarian education by herbert spencer and he is also known for his concept survival of the fittest survival of the fittest means that Human development had gone through an evolutionary series of stages, from the simple to the complex, and from the uniform to the more specialized kind of activity. Next is industrialized society require vocational and professional education based on scientific and practical objectives. So, as we became more industrialized, Spencer believed that industry requires vocational and professional education in this philosophy of education we need to remember that he who is the fittest will survive the next philosopher is john dewey he is one of the most prominent figure as well in in the field of education and he is known because of learning by doing or learning through experience so for him it is not enough 
that you know all the theory in all your subject matter, but the most important is you know how to apply that in real life. According to him, education is considered to be a social process and so school is intimately related to the society that it serves. So, education is a social process. It's a product of a community. It's a community of people willing to learn and to take part of changes that they want in their society and that school is serving the society it belongs. And since a school is a social agency, its main function is to shape human character and behavior. He believes that schools are for the people and by the people. Schools are democratic institution. Everyone is encouraged to participate in democratic process. There should be an equal opportunity to be given to all members of that community. John Dewey said that students learn when they are the center of the educative process. They will think of the problem that they are interested in, do the research to solve the problem, and apply solutions. In the contrary on the idea of John Locke, Dewey did not disregard the wisdom of the past. He still believes that we can still learn from the past, but it is then the job of the students to test the applicability of the information gathered from the past because ideas are still relevant and the ideas that are still relevant must be used and the irrelevant ones must be forgotten. And that is why, for Dewey, the ideal learner is the one who does not only learn by doing, but also connect accumulated wisdom of the past to the present. Next is George Counts, Building a New Social Order. George Counts, on the other hand, believes that the schools and teachers should be the agent of change of social improvements. He actually reiterated that everyone should aim for change for the better and not just for the sake of changing. We all know change is the only constant thing in the world. If Kant said everyone should change for the better, so we should provide quality education and equal learning opportunities to all students and for him the best teaching method is problem solving as George Counts said material progress is very evident but moral and ethical development seems to have lagged behind in reality improvement is very visible everything are changing but the humans are still as crooked and as flawed as before. The next philosopher is Theodore Bramelt, known as a reconstructionist, and he believes being a social reconstructionist, you teach humans to be truly humans. And in order to create order, the schools should teach people how to be in control their own destiny because one's life is not predestined because we are responsible for everything that is happening in our lives so when we fail we should not blaming the people around us but to blame ourselves because we are totally responsible for the kind of life that we have according to Bramall as well Everyone must be given equal access to education and any form of discrimination should be eliminated. And he emphasized the right of all citizens to free to education. Everyone must be educated in the same manner regardless of race and social status. The last philosopher is Paulo Freire in his philosophies about critical pedagogy and dialogue versus the banking model of education. Paulo Freire is a renowned educationist and philosopher. He explored the banking system in his book, 
the pedagogy of the oppressed. He also claimed that education and literacy are essential for social change and that humans must be educated so they would not be victim of oppression nor be oppressors. That is why Paulo Freire believes that schools and teachers would change a certain person's perception and he also saw teaching and learning as a process of inquiry and active process where the students should be the doers of the action and where students is not just passive agents of learning but must be the one to act so that they would learn. They are not supposed to be taught what is learned but they have to be taught how to learn for themselves and how to be responsible for their own learning. He also believed that the teachers should not think that they are the fountains of knowledge and that students are not empty receptacles. He calls this pedagogical approach the banking method of education. Teachers should not supposed to be the one giving of everything all instructions to the students. They are supposed to be the guides on the side. Then, they are supposed to be the facilitator of learning. He also proposed the theory of critical pedagogy, which focuses on dialogue. He believes through sincere dialogues, respect and understand would be rise. Through sincere dialogues, would promote respect and understanding between and among the students and the teachers. These dialogues, which Paolo Fieri means, is the interaction or interactive discussion between the students and the teachers. The students should have the right to raise questions if they do not understand the topic, and the students should be given the right to express their interest and their desires and the teacher, in the other hand, would be crafting to address these desires. That would be all for my topic, Philosophical Perspectives on Education from Various Philosophers. Thank you for watching.